Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at AT&T, ticker symbol T. So the goal is to see if AT&T stock is worth buying today, since we can see that AT&T stock has fallen about 20% off of its highs back in May. Now, one of the potential appeals of AT&T stock is their dividend. In fact, if we were to pull down a quote of AT&T stock from a site, let's say, from like a Yahoo Finance, well, we can see that AT&T stock is showing a dividend yield in this case, a forward and div dividend yield of a bit more than 8%. Ultimately, we're trying to see if AT&T is worth adding to one of our investment portfolios, either for that dividend or perhaps for the growth potential or the upside of AT&T in general. So over in our private live streams, we're building uh, different investment portfolios. Just to name a few, we've got a dividend investor, a retired investor, a growth investor, and a fairly new investor with limited capital. So one of the goals of this AT&T stock analysis is to see where, if anywhere, AT&T stock could be a good buy today in one of these portfolios. We're actually doing this analysis because it was brought up as a potential dividend investment. So we're going to take a moment and spend some time with this, the 8% dividend yield that we saw because it's a bit it's a bit deceptive. Okay, so let's get into this thing. So the big news over the past six months or so is that AT&T is spinning off their Warner Media business they, and they're merging it with Discovery. And it's crucial that we understand how this deal works if we want to make an informed investment decision today about buying AT&T stock. So in a video that I did a few months back when the deal was first announced, well, I walked through the deal and how that deal, how the business was being broken up. So what I've done here is I've taken a short clip from that video, which I'll play for you in a second, and that clip walks through the basics of the deal. Now, if you already know how this deal is set up for both AT&T and Discovery, feel free to skip ahead. This clip's about three minutes long. Otherwise, I'll come back at the end of the three minutes. We'll look at the fair value of AT&T stock using discounted free cash flow, as well as their dividend. Okay, here we go. So just to illustrate, we're gonna say that this is AT&T's business and AT&T is moving their Warner Meteor division into a brand new company. And Discovery, which in 2020 had two primary segments, they had their US networks and international networks, and they're moving their entire company into the new company. Once combined, if we take just the revenues from 2020 for all of Discovery and all for Warner Meteor, well, this is what their new revenue breakdown would look like, again, based on 2020 revenue. And as we could see, well, Warner Media, because they're a larger division, well, they would account for about three quarters of total revenue for the new company, whatever that ends up being called. So the good news and the theory behind this whole deal is that once these two businesses are combined, well, these two businesses would suddenly have, theoretically, many more offerings. And hypothetically, they could go up against companies like uh, Netflix or the Disney Plus platform. Okay, so the real question is, what does each group, each current present day group, get from the new company or from the deal in general? Well, first, Discovery shareholders, well, 100% of their business goes into the new business and their shareholders will get 29% of the new company. And AT&T shareholders get the remaining 71%. So in theory, if we own shares of AT&T today and we held those shares all the way through the completion of this deal, which is expected to be sometime in the middle of 2022. Well, we would then, at that point, once the deal is closed, we would get shares, we would have our shares in AT&T, and we would get shares in the new company. But one important point to consider here is that since Discovery is going completely into the new company, well, of course, the new company is going to end up with about $15 billion in debt from Discovery. And AT&T is supposed to get about $43 billion from the new, from the merger happening. Now, this could be from a few different sources. First, might AT&T might be able to push some debt into the new company. So in theory, if they take $43 billion off their balance sheet and move it over into the new company, it's like getting $43 billion in cash since it's now the new company's problem. Now, AT&T's management also came out and said that it's possible that they get some debt securities. So perhaps the new company issues debt, they give that debt, so AT&T would become the debt holder for the new company's debt, and then AT&T would be able to collect those interest payments, and then at some point, the principal payment as well. So again, that would be an asset for AT&T, so that could be a good thing as well. And the final possibility is that the new company just straight up gives AT&T cash. So again, they could use that to pay off debt, but there's a few more question marks there. Now, I'm guessing that it's mostly going to be debt being parked at the new company, so AT&T is move, gonna move debt off their own balance sheet onto the new company. I think that that makes the most sense to me, but 
a lot of that, I think, will shake itself out over the next year while this deal is being finalized. Okay, so that's the basics of what's happening with the AT&T spinoff of their water media business. Now let's jump into the fair value of AT&T stock using discount of free cash flow. So this is our discount of free calculation using analyst estimates for free cash flow going out the next few years. And first, when we look at these numbers, well, I think the important numbers is to notice the drop off in free cash flow expectations from 21, 2021 to through 2022. And this is happening because of the expected spin-off of the Warner Media business that is supposed to be completed in 2022. Now that 20 or so billion for free cash flow, according to analysts, well, that's right in line with what management said. Management said that they expected for 2022 free cash flow to be about $20 billion. So I think that's a very reasonable number to use. And then going forward, I think that the growth rate that analyst estimates are using for free cash flow, again, seem very reasonable. Now, the future numbers are using just AT&T's core business. And I say core business because AT&T also completed another move in recent months where they spun out their DirecTV business. So right now, DirecTV is acting as a standalone company. AT&T owns about 70% of it. And they got, I think, about $7.6 billion from private equity firms for the 30% that those companies own. But they are, at, they are operating independently, which is probably a good thing because AT&T didn't do too many great things with the DirecTV company. So I think them acting independently is a good thing. More importantly, they got some cash to pay off some of their debt. They also sold off a few other smaller business lines. They sold off a, sold off a gaming piece to EA. Uh, so th they did that to try to raise some cash to help pay off some debt. We'll come back to some of their debt in a second. But right now, AT&T, as of the most recent quarter, has about $21 billion in cash. Now, this is helpful because when we're doing a fair value calculation, like discount of free cash flow, well, we want to adjust that for debt. So just to explain this calculation real quick, just so we're all on the same page, basically what we do with discount of free cash flow is we take our expectations for free cash flow going out the next few years, discount them back to today. For that, we're using a required rate of return of 7.5%. That's our discount rate. And this gives us a total company value of about $400 billion. But this includes their debt. When we are looking at discount of free cash flow, we're essentially looking at if we took over the business, well, how much would we owe? If we paid off all their debt using their cash, how much would that adjust the value of the business? And because AT&T has about $200 billion in debt, minus the cash they have, because we want net debt, so subtract the 21 or so billion they have, well, we get a new company value, a debt adjusted company value of about $218 billion per share. This is after cash and debt. We divide that by the shares outstanding. That would imply after accounting for their debt, the fair value of just the stock should be about 31 bucks per share. Right now, at and is traded cl trading closer to $25, $26 a share. So right now, at and stock looks fairly undervalued. But this is for the entire company, including the, water, the Warner Media part of their business. Right now, those numbers are still baked into the stock price. So the question is, do we buy at and stock today? Do we buy it after the Warner Media deal is done, or do we avoid it altogether? Well, first, we need to try to estimate what AT&T investors could get once the Warner Media deal or the Warner Media Discovery deal is actually completed during 2022. So here's how we can estimate, uh, just so we, we let's lay the groundwork for how this would work. Now, a new company is being cre created. Discovery shareholders are getting 29% of that new company. AT&T shareholders are getting the other 71%. Simple enough. Okay, so right now, Discovery, whose shareholders have already approved this merger, and right now that company, they're publicly traded, they have a market cap of about $12.2 billion. Now, since Discovery investors know the spinoff is going to happen, they've had time to analyze the deal, break it down, and decide, ultimately let the market decide, what it will be worth in the future. That's what the stock market is. Stock market is very forward looking. So we have to assume that their current market cap is how they are valuing their piece of the deal. Now, whether they should be valuing it that way is a whole different story. But for now, let's just assume this is how they are valuing it. So let's just take that and run with it. So we take the current market cap and we divide that by Discovery's portion of the whole deal. What's their cut? Their cut is 
So we take the current market cap divided by 29%. That implies that the entire company value should be about $42 billion. Hopefully, this makes sense. Hopefully, we're on the same page so far. Well, now we know that AT&T shareholders are getting the other 71% of the new business. So 71% of the value of that company, of the $42 billion, well, we that is about $30 billion. We take 42 divided by 0.71, about $30 billion. So that's how much of, that's the value that AT&T shareholders are getting out of it. Now, one of the assumptions is that if we invest in AT&T, we will get shares in both AT&T and we will also get shares in the new company, 71% of the new company. So we take this value, AT&T's cut of the company, we divide it by AT&T's shares outstanding, and just like that, AT&T's investors, we see, will get about $4.19 per share. This is from their portion of the Warner Media business. Okay, so this brings us back to the question, do we want to buy AT&T stock today? So the way that a spinoff works is the value is spun out of the current business. It's spun out of the current stock price. So if our current stock is worth 26 bucks, well, the $4.19 is spun out and the new value of AT&T stock would be about $21.81. Total, that's the total value. We still have the same value. It's still worth about 26 bucks per share when combined. They just spun off into different businesses. It's important to remember that spin-offs don't create value, they separate value. Okay, so that's supposed to be completed in the middle of 2022. But now this brings us to their dividend, which again is a key part for a lot of AT&T stockholders. So we already saw the quote from Yahoo Finance where they showed us AT&T's dividend being about 8%. But here's the real problem. Management came out and said when they announced this, the spin-off was happening, they said that they plan on reducing their dividend to be about 40 to 43% of free cash flow for a dividend. They also said that they expected to earn about $20 billion for free cash flow in 2022. So our analyst estimate here again is about in line with management expectations. So let's pretend that management is going to pay right in the middle of what they said. They said between 40 and 43%, we'll take 41.5%. So when we do that math and we convert it over to a per share basis, well, we can see that AT&T is expected to pay out $1.16 per share for the year. Over the past 12 months, AT&T has paid $2.08 per share in dividends. Now, that's how they get the 8% dividend yield. But what if we bought the stock today and then they drop their dividend like they said they're going to, to $1.16 per share? Well, if we pay $26 per share and we only earn $1.16, well, just like that, the dividend yield drops down to 4.5%. Now, assuming that we are going to buy at and stock today, that is our yield on cost once the spinoff is complete. But what if we waited until after the spinoff happened? We estimated that at and stock price, they're going to spin off the business and the stock price will drop by a bit more than four bucks a share. Well, if we bought at that lower price, call it $21.89, if we bought the stock at that level, well, now our dividend yield, because we're paying a lower price for it, our dividend yield would jump up a bit. It would jump up to about 5.3%. So the real question in my mind is, do we want to own a piece of discovery? If we want to own a piece of Discovery and we buy it before the spinoff happens, well, we have to give up a little bit of dividend yield on cost because essentially a piece of what we invested today in at and will be spun off into Discovery and they're very unlikely to be paying a dividend. So if we do, well, if we want to own that piece, well, buying the stock today could make a lot of sense. And if we believe that analyst estimates are right going forward, this could make even more sense because there's also some potential upside. So we would collect our 4.5% or so dividend yield, and we have some potential upside because this stock looks like it's currently undervalued right now. Now, if we only care about the dividend yield, it probably makes more sense to own at and stock after the spinoff happens. After the spinoff happens, then we could buy at and stock in theory at a lower price, assuming everything else stays the same. Now, for our personal investment portfolios, I think it could make a lot of sense to add at and stock at, to at least some of the portfolios that we're running over in the private investing community. If, they, if that investor wants dividends but doesn't necessarily mind a bit of volatility, well, buying it now when you get the at and discovery deal, you get both could make a lot of sense. Now, if you're curious about maybe buying this stock today because then we own Discovery 
And if you ever do a fair value calculation for discovery, it looks super undervalued using analyst estimates at, at least. Well, we in our more recent live stream, one of the recent live streams that we did where we were looking at, or we do a discounted free cash flow live stream every week where we run through a bunch of different companies real quick that you guys throw at us. And then we do a deeper dive, a somewhat deeper dive on some companies. In the most recent one, well, or one of the recent ones, we did a deeper dive on what would why discovery stock looks so obscenely undervalued. So if you're curious about owning discovery stock, maybe you want to come over, sign up for the community, go check out that live stream. So if you want to get access to those live streams, I will leave a link in the description below to sign up. There's a Patreon link that brings you over. Patreon's like a, the gateway to get into the community. So if you want to do it, I'll leave a link in the description below. There's a link right here. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.